Hello everyone. Previously we looked at how to set up Next.js. Today we'll look at how routing works in Next.js and we'll use that to continue creating our Next.js application. First, what is routing and why does it matter? Well, routing determines which components to render based on the URL being called. In other words, it's how Next.js maps URLs to specific pages or components in your application. In Next.js, routing is handled by the pages directory that's in your project. This directory contains all the pages that make up your application and each page corresponds to a specific URL. Oh, by the way, Next.js also has an experimental feature where the pages are managed in the slash app directory. When you activate it, Next.js warns that it may cause unexpected or broken application behavior use at your own risk. So I'll do a specific video on that at a later date. For now, however, we'll be sticking to the pages directory. Now, how does Next.js map URLs to components? Let's say you have a Next.js application with an index and about file and a folder called blog with an index and a first post in it, all this in the page directory. Now, Next.js uses file-based routing. Now, what does this mean? When a user navigates to your application, Next.js looks at the URL and determines which page to render based on the file name in the pages directory. Let's say your website is hosted at codeapps.dev and a user navigates to HTTPS codeapps.dev. In this case, Next.js will map the root URL, the home page, to the index.tsx file. If the user navigates to codeps.dev slash about, next will match the slash about URL to the about.tsx file. Once next has identified the component file, it then reads the default export from that file and renders that component. It's also worth mentioning here that Next.js supports nested routes. In our example, next will match the slash blog route to the blog slash index file and the blog slash first post URL to the blog first post TSX file. And that's all well and good, but if you're coding a blog, you don't want to create a page for every single article. Thankfully, Next.js also provides a way to define dynamic routes, which allows you to match URLs that have specific patterns. Typically for a blog post, we'll use its slug, which is basically often the title, all in lowercase, and the space is replaced by hyphens. In this case, we define a dynamic route using square brackets. In our example, instead of the first post TSX file, we would have a slug file between square brackets.tsx. In this case, the square brackets around the slug parameter indicate that it's a dynamic parameter that can take on different values. So if a user navigates to slash blog slash first post, Next.js will now render the slug.tsx component and pass in the string first post as a parameter. Now, this is just an overview of what routing in Next.js allows, but it's enough for what we want to do. So let's apply all this to our Next.js application. We'll set up dynamic routes later when we create the full blog content. For now, we'll navigate between blog pages and the root pages, the, app, the home page. And we'll set up, we'll create a nav bar, a navigation bar. We'll set up the layout first and then do the navigation. To do this, we'll continue the header component that we started in the previous video. Uh, for those of you who missed out on the previous installment, here's the link that allows you to follow along by downloading the code of where we're at now. The first component that we're going to need is the navbar, which is presented here on the Daisy UI website. We need to give an HTML element, a navbar class, to be able to implement this navbar. Inside the navigation bar, we can define a start, end, and central elements. In our case, we'll be limiting ourselves to the first two. We'll put the logo at the beginning on the left and the navigation element at the end on the right. To begin with, let's start by launching the project. To do this, just open a terminal window if you haven't already done so in Visual Studio Code. And then we'll type either npm run dev or if you're using yarn, you can type yarn dev. And for my part, I'm looking at pnpm at the moment. So I'm going to type pnpm run dev and this shows up the link to localhost 3000. Now if we open up localhost 3000 we can see what we had started earlier. In particular we can see our header component which <laughs> for the moment let's face it is very basic. Now we created this header component in the header.tsx file in the components folder. We can see that it was simply a div with a text that just says header. Now, instead of this div, we'll be using a header element, which will make our HTML a lot more semantic. And based on the Daisy UI documentation, we need to specify class name equals 
navbar on this header element. Now within this element, we're going to be creating a first div where we'll simply write logo. Then we'll add class name equals navbar hyphen start to this div. Now we're going to add a second element, also a div, and we'll specify that its class name is navbar hyphen end in this case. We're going to be placing the menu items. We'll create three divs. In the first one, let's write blog. In the second, let's write concept. And in the third, connection. If we look at the result, we can see that the different elements are there, but they're all squashed together. They should be able to, to breathe more, to have more space. So we're going to add some horizontal padding. To do this, we'll add a px hyphen three class to each of the menu navigation elements, as well as while we're at it to the logo. By the way, before we go into navigation, let me know if you have any questions, if the, anything is not clear, if you have any comments. Now, let's look at how to handle navigation between different pages. If you remember, we already started to create a very basic home page and blog page, and we'll see how to navigate between these different pages. Now, in the header component, if we were in pure HTML, we just put an A element, an anchor element with an href that indicates a link to the page. In Next.js, things aren't really that much more complicated. Instead of the A element, we'll be using a link component. And that has the href attribute that indicates the path to the page. So here we have link href equals and then slash blog with the blog inside. If we test this and click on the link, we end up on our blog page. Yay! Now this creates a new problem for us because we can't yet go back to the home page. Now what are we going to do? We'll simply add a link to the logo. Um, well, logo-ish that will take us back to the home page. So in the same way, we'll type link href equals slash and then the logo. Now we can navigate between the two pages by clicking on the links on the header. We can switch between the blog and the home page. Now we could be using the A elements, the anchor element, but the link component allows for client side routing using Next.js's router, which provides a much better user experience, a more single page application type experience.